Our next guest tonight is chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. And thank goodness, because this country has never been more in need of intelligence than we are right now. Please welcome the chairman of the Intelligence Committee and our local congressman, too, the Honorable Adam Schiff. Hello, Honorable Adam Schiff. Is it okay to call you Adam, or should we go with Congressman? I guess Congressman is the way to go. Adam sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good. You know, uh, all things considered, uh, doing just fine. Healthy and hoping to stay that way. Are you feeling like you're going to miss Donald Trump? Are you a little bit wistful right now? <laughs> I am not the least <laughs> bit wistful. Uh, in fact, I think, uh, along with the rest of the country, just not being bombarded with his tweets every day uh, has been the greatest improvement to all of our mental health. So uh, I can't wait for the moment that he's gone. It just can't come quick enough. It is interesting how much he seems to have disappeared since he's been taken off social media. I mean, it really made a... I didn't think... I thought he'd still figure out ways to get in our faces, and he hasn't. You know, you're absolutely right. I thought he would as well, but he's, I think, a combination of lost that big platform on social media, but also gone into seclusion. Uh, you know, I think he still can't get over that he is leaving office uh, as a, a big loser uh, and really doesn't want to be seen. So fine, good riddance. Uh, it, you know, uh, I uh, can't wait for the Biden administration <laughs> to begin uh, yeah. and for us to be able to turn the page on this ugly chapter. Yeah, it ended in a very ugly fashion. You were in the Capitol when, um, when the animals attacked and um, I would imagine that was a scary experience. Uh, it was. Uh, you know, I was very focused on what I was doing. Uh, the speaker had asked uh, me and several of my colleagues to lead the opposition to this challenge to the electors. And I was thinking about what am I going to say? How am I going to rebut the arguments the others were making? And I looked up and saw the speaker was gone from the chair. Uh, and then the police came immediately back in and got our number two, Steny Hoyer, out of the chamber. And uh, I remember going up to Jim McGovern, a colleague from Massachusetts who was asked, asked to step in for the speaker and preside. Uh, and I went up to him and I said, thank God we finally have someone disposable in the speaker's chair. Um, I still didn't know how serious the situation was, but then we had these successive announcements by Capitol Police that there were intruders, uh, rioters in the building. We needed to get gas masks out. Um, one of my uh, new colleagues uh, picked up one of these posts with a hand sanitizer attached to it to use as a club. Uh, and I didn't recognize the member. Um, and I said, how long have you been here? And he said, 72 hours. Uh, and I said, what? And he said, I, I just got elected. And not knowing what else to say, I said, well, it's not always like this. Um, <laughs> and uh, I remember one of my other colleagues, uh, Sean Patrick Maloney, as we walked out, he pointed to this uh, Republican member with the post with a hand sanitizer attached. And he said, well, either that guy's really concerned over his safety or he's just really dedicated to hand hygiene. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it, it, was, it was awful, uh, surreal. Yeah. And, and of all uh, the people in there, you, you have to be aware of the fact that you are one of the more recognizable faces when it comes to the anti-Trump movement. And it probably wouldn't have been great if, if they'd found you. Luckily, they didn't find you. You guys were corralled into a room together in that room where you were with Republicans, some of whom may have contributed to what happened. Was there, was there animosity? Was there bonding? What was, the, what was it like in there? Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that uh, it would not have been a good thing for the mobsters to get a hold of me. A number of Republicans, uh, as we are rushing out of the chambers, uh, said to me, because we could literally see glass breaking as the rioters were smashing the glass doors uh, to get into the chamber. A number of Republicans said to me, you can't let them see you. Um, you know, we can talk to these people. We know these people, but you can't let them see you. And my initial reaction was to be touched that they were concerned for my safety. But then a moment later, I thought to myself, no, wait a second. Um, if these guys hadn't been pushing out the president's lies for the last four years, I wouldn't have had to worry about my security. Uh, no one would have had to worry about their security. And so when we did get to that secure space, there was a lot of animosity. 
uh, you know, on the, on the part of many of us towards our Republican colleagues that had brought such ruin on our house, uh, who even then, you know, standing around um, with no masks on, just adding to the, the miserable circumstances, but then to go right back to the floor hours later and pick up where they left off, uh, propagating the big lie. Um, and, and these members, Jimmy, they know it's a big lie. Uh, mm -hmm. Unlike some of those insurrectionists who believe the president's lies, they know they were lying to the American people, these members, uh, and that's just unforgivable what they, what they brought down on this country. We came very close uh, last week to losing our democracy, and not just because of the insurrectionists, but because um, if millions of people hadn't defied efforts to disenfranchise them and go to vote, if others hadn't done their duty, local elections officials, and played it by the book, if secretaries of state like in Georgia hadn't done their job, if judges hadn't done their job, Donald Trump would have succeeded in overturning a democratic election and put us on the fast train to dictatorship. We came very close to losing something very precious. Congressman Adam Schiff is with us. We'll be right back. What are the odds if left in office that he will continue trying to cheat? I will tell you, 100%. Not five, not 10, or even 50, but 100%. That is Congressman Adam Schiff. You were right. Is it hard not to tell everybody? I told you so. I mean, at the, when you specifically on television said 100%, which I wonder, even as you were saying those words, did you think maybe it would be 99% and not 100? Did you really know it was 100? I, you know, I felt pretty confident it was 100 because, look, uh, we've known who this guy is from day one. Um, and there was no camouflaging it. Donald Trump never tried to hide his depravity, his lack of ethics, his lack of character, his willingness to cheat by any means. So, you know, this adds to the tragedy, Jimmy, because it was so eminently predictable and foreseeable. This didn't yep. have to happen. Uh, you know, if, if more of those senators had found the courage as Mitt Romney did to, to live up to their oath. Um, they didn't dispute the president's guilt. Uh, they, they just didn't have the courage to act on their conviction. And, uh, and it's been ruinous for us uh, that they didn't. I have to say, I think the case you made in the first impeachment trial was, it was even stronger, more clear cut than, than this one. Were you encouraged by Mitch McConnell's words today where he really put blame squarely on the president for what happened. Well, he is certainly speaking like someone who recognizes the president's guilt and that what he did is an impeachable offense. But nonetheless, uh, there is some ambiguity in his words. Um, he, uh, and I can't remember exactly his phrasing, but he didn't use the word incitement. Uh, he did talk about the president's responsibility in terms of mobilizing that mob. Uh, but I think he still left himself some room uh, I, I have to hope and, and uh, pray that he will do his constitutional duty, because I think as Mitch McConnell goes, many other Republican senators will go. But we felt it vitally important in the House that we do our job. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful that we had uh, 10 Republicans willing to do theirs. Um, it certainly doesn't excuse all the enablement that those 10, as well as uh, hundreds of others uh, in the GOP, uh, have committed over the last for years, but nonetheless, um, a very important step at accountability to impeach this president again. Uh, and uh, I, I hope and pray that he's convicted because, Jimmy, if it was 100% likelihood that he would seek to cheat again in the last election, it is also 100% likely that if he runs again in four years and we allow him to do so, he will seek to cheat in that election as well. Do you think President Trump will go to prison? Do you think there's a chance that that will happen? Uh, there's certainly a chance. Uh, I don't know how to, to gauge the odds. Um, the Justice Department and Merrick Garland is going to have very difficult decisions to make, and I have a lot of confidence uh, that Judge Garland will make them with, with the greatest integrity. There's already an indictment that's been written by the Southern District of New York in which Donald Trump is individual number one and organized and directed a campaign fraud scheme, the same one that Michael Cohen went to prison for. Um, so there, there are those issues, even separate and apart from his incitement of violence at the Capitol. Um, but there are uh, also others around the president who uh, have, I think, criminal as well as civil exposure. 
where that will all end up, I don't know. Uh, but I do think there is a need for accountability uh, that yes, we need to heal and yes, we need to bring about unity and there needs to be reconciliation, but there can't be reconciliation without accountability, without truth and without justice. Well, you know, uh, I, we thank you for how seriously you take your job. Uh, it seems that many in, in the House don't and um, that I know that you do and I know that you work very hard and, and uh, thanks for everything you, you've done to uh, keep this guy in check, uh, you know, whether it's successful or not. Um, you, di you did a lot, I think, and um, it makes us feel good to know that we have somebody in Congress uh, who is uh, actually intelligent working in the Intelligence Committee. So thank you, Congressman Schiff. I, I appreciate you being with us. I hope Joe Biden doesn't come up with a mean nickname for you. That would be totally <laughs> out of line. <laughs> and thanks for being with us. We'll be right back with Jack Harlow. Jimmy Kimmel, live. <laughs> this is ridiculous.